Conium is a complex mix of the fetal intestinal secretions, which include bile acids, the shed and swallowed material, including the cells from the surface of the skin. And uh, these are the contents of the amniotic fluid, which are swallowed by the baby. It's more common in the term and post-term babies. However, the asphyxial contribution makes it more serious in the uh, term babies. If the post-term babies are following, uh, I mean, delivery following fetal distress, they are at risk as well. 10 to 15% of labor is complicated by meconium strain like Of this, only 10% develop the meconium aspiration pneumonia or syndrome. So most of them are the post-term babies who pass through on their own. And these babies are not at high risk. The presence of meconium stain liquor with the respiratory distress and chest X-ray findings plus or minus PPHN leads to meconium aspiration syndrome. There may be patchy overinflation with fluffy opacities. There is also a chemical pneumonitis and we would often see a significant rise in CRP after the 24 to 48 hours. And it can even reach the 90s to 100s in many of these babies. Uh, of course, you would treat them with antibiotics, but if there is definite meconium aspiration, the baby is clinically improving well, you may not need to do a lumbar puncture unless the blood culture is positive. And the duration of treatment would depend on how quickly the baby improves and how quickly the CRP comes down. So usually five days of antibiotic may be enough. The CRP is dropping and we may not wait till the CRP becomes totally normal in these babies. And they explain the ball valve mechanism that there may be overinflation and this leads to uh, risk of air leak in these babies. So this is the X-ray in a typical meconium aspiration syndrome, fluffy pacifications in different parts. And you may also see um, cystic areas or ball well mechanism related injury and risk of air leak. Of course, this baby is intubated as well. Initial stages, you would label it as meconium aspiration pneumonia. If there is PPHN, then it becomes meconium aspiration syndrome. Uh, air leak is very high risk in these cases because of the ball valve mechanism which allows the air to enter the alveoli but it doesn't come back out and this is one of the reasons why we get the barrel shaped chest. Uh, how will we approach the management? So we should have caution with the use of CPAP. Consider an early chest x-ray because there is a high risk of air leak in these cases before you even increase the pressure on CPAP but don't delay the CPAP waiting for the x-ray. Avoid hypoxia, hypothermia, and also hyperthermia because there is a risk of asphyxial insult in these babies. Aim for saturation in the high 90s, uh, 95 to 98% in most of the settings because of the high risk of PPHN. But don't exceed 98% because you may start getting into hyperoxic range and hyperoxia is not good with the free, radical, free oxygen radical induced damage. Support the ventilation as needed. You may need to intubate the baby uh, and if non-invasive ventilation is not adequate. We used to have a lower threshold to intubate, but as time goes on, we are more comfortable managing these babies non-invasively with a higher FiO2 if needed. And if the baby is very sick, we go for umbilical lines and IV fluids will be part of the management as well. Because these are term babies, usually we may not start TPN, but if the lung disease doesn't improve quickly, we will consider TPN as well. Surfactant therapy can be considered where your oxygen requirement is more than 50%. Of course, you have to go with X-ray picture where there is typical uh, aspiration pneumonia. You need surfactant more than if oxygen requirement is high because of PPHN. So you would suggest echocardiography as well before you consider surfactant. And as I explained earlier, it's a secondary surfactant deficiency due to inactivation of the um, surfactant by meconium. The management is supportive, similar to respiratory distress syndrome. And I mentioned use of ventilation, invasive and non-invasive, depending on the circumstances. You might have a lower threshold invasive ventilation where there is PPHM. And the surfactant therapy is very important where your oxygen requirement is rising and you have definite lung disease and the CO2 is high on the gases as well. So if there is PPHM, it's debatable whether the surfactant would help. You may have to go for vasodilator treatment like nitric oxide early on. And if it doesn't respond, you can consider surfactant. High frequency ventilation is an option and we will be discussing the strategy in a separate lecture. So the surfactant is indicated if ventilated and needing more than 0.5 FaO2. Surfactant lavage has been tried, but it is not well established. And surfactant replacement therapy has been shown to reduce the need for it as well. Inhaled nitric oxide is 
one of the most important advances that has helped in PPHN. So the need for ECMO has dropped and this will be covered as a separate lecture, uh, both nitric oxide and use of ECMO. There is increased risk of wheeze in later life, but other than that, if the baby did not suffer asphyxial insult and the hearing is not affected, the outcome is good. The NRP changes in approach to meconium stain liquor with routine ET section not being advocated, and we only suction as part of airway obstruction clearance as part of Mr. Sopa.